everyone, this is part two of the little tutorial series that I'm doing on relinking an Avid sequence in Resolve using an AAF. So in the first video, I sort of showed best practices for locking a cut, how to get your sequence organized, how to output a reference video, which you're going to be using when you bring the sequence into Resolve. And in this video, we're actually going to do the AAF export from Avid. We're going to bring it into Resolve. We're going to relink. We're going to go over the settings for relinking so that we can do some color correction and finishing. So here we go. So I have my Avid project that has my sequence that I created. Uh, this is my final sequence and it has various things in it that I did for reference video purposes. It has time code burning at the top. It has a 2B. Uh, 5958, it has a slate, all of the normal things that you would want to do when you're locking a cut. So now what I want to do is I actually want to take this sequence and prepare it for resolve. And so when I do that, I like to make a copy of the sequence and make some changes. So I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm going to make a new bin here and I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it to resolve. And I'm going to duplicate my sequence and put it in there. So I still have my final sequence with all of my audio and my slate and everything. I'm never going to delete that. That's going to stay in my sequence bin, but my resolve bin, I'm going to open this sequence up and I'm going to make some changes. So first of all, I'm going to pull off this time code burn in. That's an effect that resolve isn't going to care about, isn't going to understand. I'm going to leave the slate and the two beep just for reference so that we have a sense of where the start and end of this, uh, my sequence is. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at, um, what else I've got here. So Resolve will understand some really basic Avid effects, but most effects that you have in Avid, you'll probably want to recreate in Resolve. It will, it will follow this. this I've got this um, time warp effect and Resolve will understand that. So I'm going to leave that on. But some of these I had color effects on and I had that just as sort of a temporary effect because when I was working with the director or producer, I wanted to show them something and I wanted the color to look sort of okay but I'm going to redo all the color in Resolve, so I don't actually need these. So I'm going to pull off the color effects. Also, Resolve doesn't understand Avid color effects at all. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull those off now. Uh, Resolve's also not going to really love this uh, resize effect, so I'm just going to pull the resize off as well. And those effects I'm going to all recreate in Resolve. The only one I'm not going to recreate is the time effect, which is good because sometimes you might have some really kind of finicky time effects with a lot of keyframes in them that you don't want to have to recreate from scratch. So at least Resolve will follow that. So that's really good. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the audio track on this sequence because as you'll recall, we do have a reference video that's going to have the audio track on it and I'll show you in Resolve how to make use of that reference video for the audio. In this case, Resolve is going to be for video only. We're just going to use it for um, some color correction and finishing. So I'm going to actually delete this A1 track. I'm also going to delete this empty video 3 track because we don't need it. So now we have really like the simplest possible version of this sequence. It basically just has the video clips in it, which is what I want because the simpler it is, the easier time Resolve is going to have with it. So now I'm going to export this for Resolve. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did for my reference video, which is I'm going to set the in right at the start of the slate. I'm going to set the out right at the end of the video and I'm going to click export. And in my export settings, I'll go to an untitled one so you can see what the options are going to be. So I'm going to choose AAF. There's a bunch of options, obviously, in our dropdown. I'm going to choose AAF. I'm going to select use marks and use selected tracks because I've set it in and out and selected the track that I want to use. This AAF edit protocol is always good practice to check that off. Um, then what I'm going to do is some of you might be familiar with exporting AAFs for audio, um, which is another different, completely different process, but this isn't an audio AAF, this is a video AAF. So we're going to include all the video tracks in the sequence and we're not going to include any audio. Then under the export method where we have the option to like consolidate the media, copy the media, but this is not actually the media that we want because the media that's referenced in the sequence is a lower resolution offline copy. It's not the high res original camera material. So I don't want to copy this media. I want to link to the media. And then when I bring this AF into Resolve, I'm going to relink this sequence back to the original media. So I'm going to click don't export media. I'm going to leave the rest of these unchecked because we're actually just creating an empty AF for Resolve. So I'm going to click save. It's going to ask me where to put it. Okay. And then I'm going to put it, actually, I'm also going to rename it because we shouldn't call this 
copy, should we? We should call it to resolve. So I'm going to save that. I and mean, then I'm actually going to rename my seek because this was a bad practice. I should have renamed this previously. That's okay. I can just rename it now. Okay. So it makes a, when it does the AAF export, it makes a copy. Um, so I can see exactly what was exported. So if I open up this exported one, it's, I see exactly. So it's only exported from the slate to the end, um, which is what I wanted. So, okay, so that's my AF, that's done. Um, I don't need Avid Media Composer anymore, so I'm gonna quit out of Avid and I'm gonna open up DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so in the project window for DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna navigate to my pre-existing dailies project. So this was the project that I originally used when I created the dailies. I followed a lot of the same methods that I showed in my previous video series about creating dailies in DaVinci Resolve. That includes creating real names, tape names, and kind of organizing the media in a particular way so that the metadata is maintained. So here we are in the media section of Resolve. And as you can see, I've already got a master media pool where I had processed my footage initially. So um, I know that this project is gonna have a lot of the metadata that I need. So I'm gonna use the same project to bring the AAF in and upres it. So I'm gonna create a new bin here. I'm just gonna right click new bin and I'm gonna call it um, conform. You can call it finishing, you can call it whatever you want. And into this bin, I'm going to import the AAF. So I'm gonna go file, import timeline, import AAF. It's gonna ask me where, so I'm gonna to navigate to the AAF that I created, click open. So now Resolve is gonna ask me some stuff about this and this is really a really important step. So the timeline name, that's fine. You can change it if you want, that doesn't matter. Um, it's gonna automatically set the settings of the project. Now this box is always checked off and this is the box that you wanna uncheck. Automatically input source clips into media pool. Now the source clips that it's gonna find for these is the Avid MXF media. And that's not the media that I want to link to my sequence. I wanna to link to the original camera files. So I'm gonna uncheck that and instead I'm gonna check link to source camera files. So this is how you get the AAF to relink back to your original footage. It asks me my timeline resolution, that looks fine, and I'm gonna click OK. Then it asks me, it's giving me a checkbox and asking me what folders, and this is what it's saying is where should I look for this, these original camera files that you claim exist? And I say, well, just look everywhere because I know that all of my original camera files are in these bins in the master media folder. So I'm gonna leave them all checked and I'm gonna say OK. Okay, so now it's imported the AAF and it does give you a little log of some of the things that it has encountered during the import. So it says it's imported it, great. But then it gives me a few like little error messages, which are all messages that I expected. I, there's nothing unexpected in here. There's a title that's not supported. Um, there's a couple of color adapters that aren't supported. The, the slate clip um, didn't link because obviously I created the slate in Avid and Resolve doesn't have any media to link the slate to, fine. The simty bars, which is my little two beep that I made, um, it doesn't recognize that either because that wasn't created in Resolve and that media is not in Resolve. None of that's a problem. I'm just gonna look over that, make sure, yep, that's all cool. And I'm gonna say, okay. Looks like it got all the rest of my media. So that's really great. So that's step one. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that it's actually properly linked up these files uh, in the way that it's supposed to so that it's selected the exact correct clips and the correct time code to match. That's one of the many reasons we created an offline reference. So in order to use that offline reference in Resolve, we'll go back to the media pool section and I'm gonna navigate uh, to where I stored the offline reference. So I'm just gonna go find that. Um, and here it is, this MOV file is the offline reference that I created. Now, if I just bring that into my media pool by dragging it, it's not gonna actually do what I want. What you wanna do is you wanna right click on it and you wanna add it as an offline reference clip. And this is a very specific command in Resolve. So I'm gonna click that. And now here it's come in and see how it has this little icon of like the checker box. So that means that it's set up as, and it's set up under the type, it says ref clip. So that it's slightly different than just bringing in regular media. Okay, so now with the Resolve AAF sequence selected, I'm gonna right click and under timelines, I'm gonna say link offline reference clip. So now it's offering me a dropdown of any clips that might be in the project that we've told it already are offline reference clips, such as the one we've just brought in. So I'm gonna click this one here. So now Resolve knows that this AAF sequence and this MOV file 
are connected to each other. So if I go back to the edit tab, now what I can do is instead of having the left monitor be the source monitor and the right monitor be the sequence monitor, I can change it so the left monitor is actually the offline reference clip. So now what it does is it automatically syncs up my offline reference with my sequence. So when I play forward, I can look on the left and the right and make sure that the files are exactly the same. And what Resolve actually does is it shows me if there's offline clips, it shows me on the sequence side as well what the clip is. Here we have the SMPTE bars that were offline, so it shows me that on the sequence side because it knows to take it from the reference video. Then once I jump into the actual clips that are online, it shows me on the left side what's in my QuickTime file and on the right side what's in my sequence. So I can just go through clip by clip and really check and make sure that every frame is the same and that each clip is the same. So this is the way that I like to do a conform check in Resolve. And then I can just scrub through. And if I wanted, I could play it real time and actually watch it. Um, the other thing that this does, which is really helpful, is it links the audio from the QuickTime file to your sequence. So as you'll recall, I exported a sequence in AAF without any audio in it. But if I actually just hit play, I will be able to hear the audio. You can't hear right now because it's um, playing through my computer system, but I will be able to hear the audio from the offline reference clip in my video clip so I can actually watch the material. So there we go. So now we have uh, the entire sequence here and it is ready to be finished. And that could mean doing color correction. It could mean um, recreating some effects. Whatever it is that you need to do in Resolve, your sequence is ready for it. So that's the end of this tutorial. I hope it was helpful uh, for people who are looking to bring material from Avid into Resolve. If you have any questions or technical difficulties, you can try putting them in the comments. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments if there are other processes, other tutorials that you'd like to see, and I will try to make videos for those as well.